So what's the difference between a homolytic bond cleavage and a heterolytic bond cleavage? So if you were to think of the word homolytic, what does the prefix homo tell you? When you think of homo, think of something that's the same. The suffix lytic, think of the word lysis, it means to break apart or split apart. Now hetero means different. So the word kind of tells you the type of bond cleavage that's going to occur. Now homolytic bond cleavages, they typically occur with radical reactions. So here we have chlorine gas. And if we were to irradiate it with, let's say, UV light, the chlorine bond is going to break. Now a bond represents two electrons. Because these atoms are the same, they have an equal pull on the two electrons in this bond. So when that bond breaks, it makes sense that each atom is going to take one electron from the two electrons in that bond. So we would draw a half arrow to represent the flow of one electron. And this will give us two chlorine radicals. A radical is basically an atom with an odd number of electrons. This step is known as initiation in a free radical reaction. So that's an example of a homolytic bond cleavage. It's when the bond breaks apart and each atom gets one electron from that bond. In a heterolytic bond cleavage, when the bond breaks, one of the atoms will take both electrons, leaving the other one without any. So here's a good example, the carbon-chlorine bond. When the bond breaks, will the electrons go toward the chlorine atom or the carbon atom? What would you say? Will it go in this direction or will it go in that direction? Carbon has an electronegativity value of 2.5. Chlorine, the electronegativity value for that is 3.0. So chlorine is more electronegative than carbon. Chlorine is going to have the partial negative charge. Carbon is going to have the partial positive charge. So chlorine is going to have a stronger pull on those two electrons in this bond than carbon. So when that bond breaks, those two electrons are going to go to the chlorine atom. And so what we're going to get is a carbocation, a carbon with a positive charge. And we're going to get a chloride ion, chlorine with a, a negative charge. So this example is like the first step in an SN1 reaction where the leaving group leaves. Now another type of heterolytic bond cleavage that you're going to come across in organic chemistry is when the CH bond breaks. When that bond breaks, will the electrons go toward the carbon atom or the hydrogen atom? What would you say? The electronegativity value for hydrogen is 2.1. So in the CH bond, carbon bears the partial negative charge, hydrogen bears the partial positive charge, even though that bond is relatively nonpolar. So when the bond breaks, the electrons are going to go to the carbon atom. So in this situation, we would get a carbon with a negative charge. And the hydrogen will have a positive charge, but likely the hydrogen is probably abstracted by a base, so it's just going to add to a base. But that's another example of a heterolytic bond cleavage, is where the two electrons go to one of the two atoms that had the bond. But in a homolytic bond cleavage, each atom participating in that bond leaves with one electron from that bond. So let me give you an example of these two reactions in real life. So let's say we have hydroxide and it's reacting with methyl chloride.
Now hydroxide has a negative charge. Chlorine has a partial negative charge. Carbon has a partial positive charge. So hydroxide is attracted to the partially positively charged carbon atom. So as a nucleophile, it's going to attack this carbon. And as a result, this bond is going to break. The electrons are going to go towards the more electronegative chlorine atom. So this is an example of an SN2 reaction. We're going to get methanol as a product and the chloride ion. But as we could see, as this bond breaks, that's a heterolytic bond cleavage. We can see the electrons are going toward the more electronegative chlorine atom. Here's another example. So here we have hydroxide reacting with 2-butanone. Now whenever you have a carbonyl group, on the alpha carbon, those hydrogens are relatively acidic. The pKa for this hydrogen is around 19. Now hydroxide has two choices. It can act as a nucleophile and attack the carbonyl carbon, or it can act as a base and abstract the proton. In this example, we're gonna focus on a reaction where it acts as a base. So remember, anytime hydroxide attacks a carbon, it's behaving as a nucleophile. But when it abstracts a proton, it's behaving as a base. So when it grabs that proton, what's gonna to happen to the CH bond? Where will the electrons go? We know the electrons are going to go towards the more electronegative carbon atom. And so we're going to get water as one product. And we're going to get a carbon with a negative charge. Now having a negative charge on a carbon, that's a very unstable situation. But what makes this hydrogen acidic is due to the fact that this negative charge can delocalize into the oxygen. It's much better to put a negative charge on an oxygen atom rather than a carbon atom because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. It can better handle and better stabilize that negative charge than carbon can. So what's going to happen is we can draw a resonance structure where this negative charge will form a pi bond. This pi bond will break and we're going to have two extra lone pairs on the oxygen. So this intermediate is stabilized by resonance. So this intermediate is known as the enolate ion. But this is an example where the CH bond breaks and the electrons go towards the carbon, leaving a negative charge. Here, this carbon-chlorine bond breaks, but the electrons are not going towards the carbon. They're going towards the more electronegative chlorine atom. So remember that whenever you have a heterolytic bond cleavage, the electrons will go towards the atom that is more electronegative. If the two atoms are identical and the bond breaks, typically it's going to be a homolytic bond cleavage where each atom will get one electron from the two electrons in that bond. Now, for those of you who want to access my extended organic chemistry videos, you can access it at my Patreon membership program at patreon.com slash math science tutor or in my YouTube membership program, which you can join in the video uh, below. Now, if we click on this organic chemistry post, it'll show you all my full length organic chemistry videos. So I have this video on PKA values for those of you who are studying acids and bases. For those of you who are just studying organic chemistry, this basic introduction video will really help you get started. And I have some other videos as well, hybridization, resonance structures. The free version of this video is about 20 minutes long on YouTube, but the full length version is about an hour long. Acids and bases, functional groups, Newman projections, the worksheet contains 
all of the problems in the full length video. Some of you have asked for worksheets. You prefer to work through the problems that way instead of you know watching a long video. So I have it for not all of my videos, but some of them. So we have chair confirmations. Now, for my organic chemistry exam one video, you may have to type it in in the search box to get it. Or if you look at the description section of the referring video, it'll take you directly to that link. But here is the worksheet. Now, if you want to watch a seven hour video, you can do it that way. But if you, if you prefer to print out the worksheet and work through the problems that way, um, you could do that as well. By the way, post a comment in below this video. I want to know what your thoughts are. Do you prefer to watch the seven hour video or do you prefer to study for the exam by getting a printout of the worksheet and working through the problems while you're in school? Let me know in the comment section below. Now I have other videos, stereochemistry, specific rotation, SN1, SN2 reactions. Uh, there's a practice test on that, 77 practice problems. So here's the video with the practice test, but I haven't done the worksheet yet. We got alkene reactions, alkyne reactions, alcohol reactions, radical reactions, and then my organic chemistry one final exam review video. So the video is actually finished, but the worksheet is coming soon. So let me know for those of you who are actually interested in getting these worksheets. Do you prefer to watch a six hour final exam review video, or do you prefer to have a printout of the 100 practice problems and work through it at school? Let me know in the comment section below.